It's been almost two years since the pandemic began and during this time we've been in and out of so many lockdowns. For many people, this has allowed them to really reassess their values and what they want in their career, as well as reflect on what's most important to them. We've seen this with the recent great resignation, with thousands of people quitting their jobs in order to pursue something more meaningful. Others have been able to save up money during the lockdown as well. Saving money is really important to building long-term wealth and financial insecurity, but it certainly shouldn't come to the detriment of enjoying your life today. So in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about my thoughts and financial regrets during my 20s. I do wanna make it clear that young people do face three major disadvantages when it comes to investing. These include, firstly, the stock market and the property market being at all time record highs, low or minimum wage growth in pretty much all jobs and record low interest rates, meaning that you can't make any significant returns on your savings. Throughout my 20s, I've really seen saving as the opportunity to retire early. And as a result, I've sacrificed a pretty significant part of my lifestyle. I stopped going out for the most part just so I could save a few extra bucks. And if I could do that all over again, I certainly would have just gone out more to have enjoyed my money whilst at the same time just being smarter with my savings as well. If I had instead just invested my savings into the stock market throughout that time. So my biggest regret throughout my 20s is just simply saving for the sole purpose of saving. The whole point of saving money is so that you can use that money to invest in something, maybe property or shares, and see the value of that investment compound in growth over a very long period of time. So unless you do have very specific short-term goals that you're trying to save up for, then just saving alone in your 20s, in my opinion, is a really bad idea. It's also important to remember that any amount of money that you save during your 20s probably won't pay off at least for several decades or well into your 50s and 60s. What's the point of throwing away the best years of your life just so you can get to your 60s and your 70s and be financially secure. Saving and investing, at least in most Western countries, also carries with it a significant tax burden. In Australia, if you sell an investment within 12 months of buying it, you are taxed the full amount on any profit that you make. And therefore, in most cases, this will likely mean that about 30 to 45% of your profits will go directly in tax to the government. So even if you do manage to work really hard and sacrifice your 20s to save maybe 10, 20, 50 or possibly even $100,000. It's not like you'll be able to make much more off of that on net investment returns anyway. You do get tax discounts if you sell your investments after 12 months of owning them. And that's when you're only taxed on 50% of the profit that you make which is good. But in the long run, this is still gonna have a very big and significant impact on your total returns. The shares that I own now were bought through the income that I made from my full-time job. And I pay tax on that income. And when I go to sell those shares, I will likely have to pay thousands of dollars in tax as well. So it's not like these shares are gonna allow me to get ahead significantly financially in the future regardless. Because at the end of the day, so much of your income from your job and also your investment returns go to the government. And at this point, asset prices like the stock market and property are already at such high valuations anyway. If I were to do this again, I would have instead invested most, if not all of my money into superannuation, which is just a mandatory retirement fund that everyone has in Australia. Employers are legally obligated to pay about nine and a half percent of someone's full-time wage into their superannuation. There are huge tax advantages when it comes to superannuation as well. The government has an incentive for people to have large amounts of money in their superannuation so they don't have to subsidize them with a pension at retirement. And this is why contributions by employers into superannuation are only taxed at 15%. You can then salary sacrifice even more into super up to about 27 grand a year, which is again taxed at 15%. Any money that you withdraw from super over the age of 60 isn't taxed at all. These tax rates are much, much better than the tax you're charged on your take-home pay from your job, which can range from about 30 to 45%. I've probably paid at least $100,000 in tax over the last five to six years, which could have instead just gone into my super account and had been taxed a lot less. It would have also have given me a huge peace of mind knowing that I could have also, during that time, gone out, spent money, traveled as well, whilst also knowing at the same time that a significant amount of money was going into my super fund, which would have compounded over time and resulting in long-term financial success. Don't ever see saving as something that you have to drastically sacrifice today in order to have a better life in the future. Just think critically about how you can take advantage of certain tax systems in order to still be able to enjoy your money today, whilst at the same time building long-term wealth. Another regret is chasing each job solely for the purpose of getting a pay rise. Whilst it's important to build your salary and your long-term career. You certainly don't want to job hop for the sole basis of earning an extra five to 10 grand a year. Said it's really important to think about what it is that you actually want to do. Most jobs in Australia, unless you study medicine for 10 years and become a brain surgeon or become a lawyer, investment banker, or you get really good at sales, 
won't pay you anything more than about 200 to 250K a year. And regardless, you're still gonna be taxed so much money on those incomes anyway, meaning that it's still really challenging to get ahead financially. Wealth is only something which is built over a very, very long period of time. And the opportunity to do it just on a single source of income alone, regardless of how much it is, becomes very challenging. Now, side hustles do help here, but for the most part, side hustles probably are only gonna help you get maybe an extra 10, 20, or possibly even 30K in income every year. And that's if you work really hard in addition to your full-time job. My regret is therefore not starting this YouTube channel earlier or just risking more to pursue the things that I really wanted to do or enjoy. The 20s is really the only opportunity that you have to pursue and eventually realize these dreams. Because once you start having a family, it's no longer about you and what you want. Your job then instead becomes taking care of your family. Like I said, it doesn't really matter where you're at in your investment journey because saving and investing money doesn't really make a difference anyway, unless you leave it for several decades in order to compound. It's only then that you'll be able to start living off the investments and therefore no longer have to rely on a full-time job. So if there is something that you're really passionate about, just go for it. The fact that you found your passion already means you're 10 steps ahead than most people. There's nothing you're gonna regret about it and you can always just find another job that's gonna pay the bills. If you wanna expand your mindset and the possibilities of building wealth during your 20s, then the best outcome is to travel. Traveling not only allows you to enjoy the money that you've worked so hard to save up for, but it also makes you realize that there are so many other ways and possibilities to make money online. You could start a YouTube channel or sell stock photography and videos online. Once you get really good at creating online content, you can then also build and sell courses online at scale. Just having a job and even a side hustle makes it very difficult to get ahead financially because you're only able to save in direct proportion to the amount of money that you earn, which is also in direct proportion to the amount of time that you have as well. But with an online business, you can scale your sales, meaning that you can make money which doesn't have to be in direct proportion to the time that you spend earning it. It takes a huge amount of upfront time in which you won't get paid very much, but once you start to build an online audience, it then just becomes a case of selling your products at scale. These are all the thoughts that you get to experience whilst you travel, because it opens up your mindset to all of these unlimited possibilities. If you spend more time traveling during your 20s, you'll also be able to meet other people who've got similar mindsets. Traveling alone brings me to my next point, which is not spending enough time networking and meeting new people who may have different perspectives in order to build long-term wealth without having to sacrifice your lifestyle and save week by week. I think in Australia, there's this really big cultural idea that once you've been able to save up and finally buy a property, then you've made it financially. And people as well just also largely view their full-time job as their main source of income, which is fine, but there's people out there that do think differently as well. And whilst it's hard to find these people, it is really important that you do travel so you can go out and eventually meet them. And this is where you may wanna consider becoming friends with people who are significantly older than you, say in their 30s or possibly even in their 40s, whilst you're still in your 20s. If you're struggling to meet people like this, then I would suggest at least just going on YouTube and searching for channels which talk about this type of growth mindset. So that's it from me, guys. I just wanted to make this video in order to share my experience and see whether anyone else was potentially going through this thought process as well. If you are, it'd be great if you could share with me your experience in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.